At E3, Microsoft took the wraps off the long-rumored but not until then confirmed Xbox One Scorpio. Sony declined to bring their iterative console to the show at all. They did confirm its existence ahead of E3, but they also emphasized that it would not debut at E3 this year, something that they lived up to their word on. Of course, that might have been for the best. The rumored PS4 Neo specs make it sound like a highly iterative upgrade, and while that's great, there's no denying that it would look positively archaic next to the Xbox One Scorpio. However, even as the Neo's weaker specs become the subject of much ridicule, Sony's Andrew House wants to remind us that the games will look substantially better on the new system. Speaking to BBC, House said, Well, to be very clear, the high-end PS4 codenamed Neo that we're working on is an addition to the existing lineup, not a replacement. Perhaps we have an opportunity to move slightly away from just a static console that remains absolutely the same for a period of six, seven, eight years, and perhaps offer, in addition to the current PS4, something a little extra. Particularly, and I should stress this in the area of graphical fidelity, and games that will essentially play an awful lot prettier than games have previously. While one of the reasons for the creation of the monstrous Xbox One Scorpio is by Microsoft's own admission, so that the Xbox platform has some native compatibility for virtual reality, the company is not working on a VR solution of their own in-house. In an interview with Wired, Xbox head Phil Spencer confirmed as much. Right now, we are not focused on first-party VR hardware devices, Spencer said candidly in the interview, noting that Microsoft's aim was to get as many third-party headsets working on the Xbox Scorpio as possible. He wouldn't name any of them specifically, but given that both Oculus and HTC's Vive already have some form of Xbox compatibility, it's a safe bet that they'll be supported in some form. The Xbox One Scorpio is going to launch next holiday season. Nintendo revealed a first-look trailer for the next title in the Legend of Zelda franchise heading to the Wii U and NX in 2017. More importantly, it revealed the final name for the game, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The trailer itself showcased a ton of different features like the combat, different weapons that can be used, the sheer breadth of the environments on display, new enemies including a huge rock boss, and much more. There was a ton to unpack in the short trailer, but the game itself looks very good and we're already excited to see what the open world has to offer. Those aren't the only new additions. Link can sprint, but he can also jump, allowing him to climb up trees and up the sides of cliffs. This allows for a greater degree of traversal than ever before. A special note on the name, Breath of the Wild was actually chosen to represent the game's world. Previous Zelda titles had core items as the subtitles for the game, but Breath of the Wild wants to emphasize the setting above all. Right off the bat, Link begins exploring the world and picks up a tree branch for use as a weapon. Later, he'll acquire a woodcutter's axe for knocking down trees to acquire apples, cutting wood for firewood, and much more. A rusty broadsword, a red herring of sorts that looked like the Master Sword, is also acquired eventually. A special note about the storytelling. After the opening cutscene sets the tone, you're free to travel wherever you want in Hyrule. Occasionally, a voice will chime in to discuss what you should be doing, but you can otherwise head anywhere. The story itself is fairly minimal, and Link is left to discover things on his own. For instance, you come across the Temple of Time, a hallmark location from Ocarina of Time in ruins. There you'll find some familiar enemies from the first trailer of the game, but no longer functional. A time lapse is hinted at, which makes us think that there's some way to alter time in the new Zelda. The overall tone is distinctly Zelda-like, even with the new anime-esque art style, but the world has been significantly expanded with survival elements, exploration, and a vast open space to explore. And when we say vast, we mean it. The plateau is literally one small portion of an enormous map. Furthermore, it looks like Nintendo doesn't want to risk alienating their loyal Wii U owners any more than they already will be doing. You see, by putting The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the crown jewel in the Wii U lineup that was originally announced back in 2013, and has been the one game more than any other that has managed to sell Wii U consoles on the NX, Nintendo risks losing the goodwill that they have managed to accumulate through their otherwise decent support of the Wii U. It could be even worse for Wii U owners if Zelda ended up looking better on NX. Then here we would be, having waited for four years, having been strung along for four years, and ending up with an inferior version of the game regardless. However, it seems as though this will not be the case. Nintendo producer Eiji Aonuma confirmed that the game will be the same on NX and Wii U, suggesting even graphical parity. The users will be able to have the same experience with the NX version as they will with the Wii U version, he said, suggesting that they'll be equal in terms of visuals as well as gameplay. Of course, if this is true, then the NX version may be a bit of a missed opportunity here more than anything else. The 3DS has received remasters for The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Meanwhile, the Wii U has had remasters of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. But so far, there's one 3D Zelda game that hasn't been updated for modern systems, and that is 2011's divisive The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword's release was marked by highly divided player reception, owing to its control scheme that exclusively used the Wii Motion Plus's motion capabilities and its linear and guided design, which is a departure from other games in the series. But like with all Zelda games, Skyward Sword has its fans, and those fans would like to see it remastered, maybe on Wii U, if not the NX. And speaking to IGN, Eiji Aonuma confirmed that this was not a possibility that they had ruled out yet. Yes, it's definitely possible. 
As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a result of what we wanted to expand and make a better Skyward Sword. It's like an evolved or expanded version. Putting out an HD version of Skyward Sword and tossing that into the mix might be a little weird, he said. It's always a possibility, so I really don't know. Days Gone is Sony Ben's excellent seeming new IP, an open world post-apocalyptic zombie action sandbox game. The game shown in the E3 showing that it got today, and as such we're all naturally eager to learn more about it. Speaking to Rooster Teeth, Sony Ben shared some new information on the title. They revealed for instance that the game actually is rendering all of those zombies. It's not a trick or a shortcut. There actually are that many objects being rendered. They also touched briefly upon the game's weapon crafting system, which they described as the player being given tools that they must synthesize to find their way out of situations, something that does make sense in a post-apocalyptic context. Speaking of which, the game is set just a few years after the apocalyptic event. The story is meant to be a sandbox-style depiction of what would happen when shit hits the fan really. The game really impresses upon the player their distance and tie from civilization by convincingly putting them in the wilderness. Wilderness marked by hostile weather, dynamic day and night, and yes, wildlife. Finally, the developers also confirmed that Days Gone will have emergent gameplay, something that we honestly could have guessed based on the E3 showing. Worried that your special Tommy Wisu horse mount and Sonic the Hedgehog skins won't make it into the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition? It seems that Bethesda will be supporting existing mods when the remaster comes out. Bethesda's Pete Hines answered basically yes on Twitter when asked if existing mods would be supported. However, at the outset, it would seem that some work would be needed in order to properly support the same. Also, it doesn't quite indicate how many of those mods will be coming to PS4 and Xbox One, which brings Skyrim mods to consoles for the first time. We'll have to wait till the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition is actually available both on PC and consoles in order to ascertain how many existing mods will be supported. So stay tuned for more information, and don't lose hope just yet. You might want to find a new mount in the meantime, though. Don't own a 4K TV? Then the Xbox One Scorpio just isn't for you, according to Xbox boss Phil Spencer. In conversation with Eurogamer, Spencer was asked about why consumers should opt for the Xbox One S over Scorpio, especially when the latter is out next year. He asked about what kind of TV the interviewer owned, and when the reply was a standard 1080p TV, Spencer said that you should buy this box, the Xbox One S, because Scorpio is not going to do anything for you. Scorpio is designed as a 4K console, and if you don't have a 4K TV, the benefit we've designed for, you're not going to see. Clearly, you could buy Scorpio and if and when you decide you want to buy a 4K television to take advantage of the increased performance, obviously the console will be ready for you. As for the pricing of next year's console, Spencer noted that Scorpio is for the person who's got a 4K television who's really focused on 4K gaming. It's going to be a premium price over what we're selling, the Xbox One S for, and both of them will exist in the market at the same time. Scorpio is for your 4K gamer, and that's what we designed it for. Project Scorpio is out during holidays 2017 and will apparently be the most powerful console ever. Thoughts on its applications for non-4K viewers? Let us know in the comments. We hope you've enjoyed this video, so please consider subscribing to our channel. We do original content, reviews, graphics comparison, and much more, and try to upload a video every day. Thank you very much for checking us out.